Hi everybody, it's Patty Ann, and today I'm here to show someone from the Facebook group or a YouTube group how to use Inkscape because she wants to make her husband a Christmas gift with a Dallas Cowboys logo on it. Now I know it is not okay for us to do this to sell them or anything like that, but for personal use I believe that we can use this and make one for a family member. So hang on while I get a sip of my coffee. And uh, the first thing you can see that I do is I found a logo that I liked. And actually, this was a pretty cool site right here because it tells you the history of the Dallas Cowboys logo. I thought it was kind of cool because it says blue is the only color the club uses in its symbols. It symbolizes excellence, power, perseverance, purity, strength, and integrity. No wonder there's hardly a sports team who does not use this color and its logo in some way. So anyway, my son-in-law is a very big Dallas Cowboy fan, so he'd probably like that, finding out why they use blue. So I'm going to just use this image, and I clicked on it once, and I'm going to right-click on it and save image as. <clears throat> and since I've already practiced this, I've already got it right here. Font Dallas Cowboys logo. So I'm going to save it. And I saved it in a new folder that I made that I named the Dallas Cowboys. Let's save. It says it already exists. Yes, I know because I did it already. I'll just overwrite it. Okay, then I'm going to open up the free program Inkscape. And sorry, but I thought I had this all manipulated so it'd be the exact right size I need for you guys. Hold on one sec. Okay. So here's Inkscape, and it does look just a tiny bit intimidating. I agree. Let me move it down just a little bit because I think some of it's not in the screen. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do in Inkscape is I'm going to come up here to the upper left hand corner and click on File, Import, and I'm going to go to that folder that I know the uh, image I want to use is in, and uh, mine already goes right there because I've been there before. And which one was it? Let's see. It was this one. Oh, oh, oh was this one font there we go and you remember that I did make sure that I got a nice large image when I did this so when I was searching for images I put that into the um, search function area and I showed that on previous videos but anyway when this box comes up I'm just going to say okay and there it is it comes in big like this the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Object, no, Path, Trace Bitmap. This is going to give us an idea of what's going to show up over here. Now, yours might not come in like this. Sometimes something up here is checked and it comes in looking weird. So what you want to do is come down here and make sure Colors is checked. And then you want to start getting, make sure that Remove Background is checked and Live Preview is checked. And Smooth can be checked or unchecked. Then you start using this scan area right here. That's how many different colors you're going to have scanned in here. When I get down too low, look what happens. I lose some of the coloring. So I'm going to go back up and maybe one more to make sure I have everything I want. And then I'm going to hit OK. And it's not going to look like it does anything, but it will. So hit OK. And once it comes back to where I can click on it again, like it just did, I can exit out. And so now this has been done. Let's see if I can make this smaller. So I'm holding down my Shift key and the minus key. So now what's happened is it has uh, made a, another picture of this. You see there are two of them now. The one that we want is the top one. That's the new one. The one we don't want is the bottom one. 
So I've highlighted the bottom one. I'm going to just hit delete on my keyboard. Okay, so now I'm going to come up to object and ungroup. I'm going to click off of it and then click back on and you'll see it's going to come apart in little pieces. So I have to decide which pieces I need. I think I'll get rid of this one because these look pretty much ident identical. And let's see, I don't need that one. I'll get rid of it. I do want the gray because it's going to go behind here. And I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to carefully move that back into place. Although this is just so you can see, I don't really need to do this for the process. So now that this is done, I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save it as just a logo. And here's the thing. If you don't remember to do this part, you'll be really frustrated. So here's what you have to do. See where it says you want to save it as an Inkscape SVG? You do not want to do that. You want to save it as a plain SVG. If you save it as an Inkscape SVG, when you go to find it in Cricut Design Space, you won't be able to find it. So you need to make sure you save it as a plain SVG. And say save. So now we're done with this. So we'll come over to Cricut Design Space and I'm going to upload and I see I've been playing with it. Upload an image. I'm going to browse. I believe I called it logo. Now remember yours might not have this icon on it. Mine has this icon because I have sure cuts a lot. But anyway, it's the logo SVG file. So I'm going to open. And there it is. This is what I want. So I can type in some more things here if I want to. And then hit save. Click on it and insert it. Now it's coming in with this background, this white. I guess I forgot to click remove background, but that's okay. So right now you'll notice everything's grouped together. I want to ungroup. Then I'll be able to move the different pieces away. And I can hide this background piece. Now the next thing I want to do is these are awfully tiny. When I highlight one of these, look, it's under two inches wide and one and a half inches tall. That won't work on the t-shirt. So I'm going to leave the lock locked and make this 10 inches tall. And hit enter. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to this one. Whatever I do to one, I'll do to the other. So they're exactly fit still. Okay, now I'm going to make this a little smaller by going down here in the left hand corner so you can see. And if you'll notice over on the right hand side, it's going to cut out the blue and it's going to cut out the gray, right? And you can see they'll fit together perfectly. One thing you need to remember since you're doing this in vinyl is when you go to make it, you, and you're going to continue. I have my machine still set up to custom over there on the little dial. So after I select my device, it's going to ask me, well, what material do you want to use? So I'm going to select the material material that I want, and it's everyday iron on. And so look what it says. There's an exclamation mark, a warning here. It says, make sure mirror is turned on and iron on material is placed shiny side down on the mat. So I had not turned on mirror. So I need to edit this, scroll down, click to turn on mirror. You'll see it's done. And I have to do it to both. So I'm going to edit this one, edit, come down. Turn on mirror. Done. So now my machine's ready to go. I can start cutting. 
Okay, I don't really have the black and the gray to use, or the blue, I'm sorry, and the gray to use for this project. So just so I can demonstrate how to finish it up, I'm going to use red for the first part, the part that would be gray. And remember the directions are when you're using vinyl to put the shiny side down, shiny side down. Use your little squeegee tool and make sure you squeegee out all the bubbles. And I made mine a lot smaller too because I didn't want to use too much of my vinyl for just this little demo. Okay, so let me take this over to my machine. And tip. Oh, I just turned it off. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, I've gotten it out of my machine. And I'm going to take it off of my mat. And before I waste all of this, what I'm going to do is use this little Cricut cutter again because I can kind of see where I can save some of this vinyl. And as I've said before, I like to be frugal. So I can see the edge of it is right here. So I'm going to kind of line that up to the middle of this. And just slice off a hunk. So there's one piece that I can save for something. And it looks like down below the star, let's see if I can see it well enough. That's good. Cut that off. And so now it's ready to be weeded. But before I start weeding that one, I'll get this one put into the machine. Remember, shiny side down. Squeegee it on, get rid of all the air bubbles in there. Oh, good thing I peeked because there were still some left. Let me check again. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay, I'll put this one into my machine and begin weeding the first one. You remember, weeding is one of my favorite things to do. The hardest part, as I always say, is just getting it started for me anyway. It is. Good thing there's never anything too important up in these corners. Okay, there we go, finally. Huh. I think, yeah. This is some older vinyl that I have. Let's see. So don't do it with too much gusto because this kind right here is could tear as opposed to some of the others. Wow, that other one's already done. Wow. So let me tell you about when I do go to iron this on, I do it in stages. I will do the one that's on the bottom first, which would be the gray one. Or in my case, it will be the yellow one, I believe. I'll have to double check. <laughs> I've got a lot to weed out here now, if I can see. I don't have a light. I don't have the, um, whoa. Did you see what I just did? I just weeded out the bee, which is what I need. Yikes. Good thing this is just for pre pretend. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pay attention, Patty Ann. So I want those letters to stay there. Or do I? Maybe I need to go back and look at this image. Okay, let's go back and look at what does the blue look like? Um, I did it right. <laughs> Phew. So I am going to take out these letters like this. It helps to go back and look at your uh, original design. So that you can see re really what it is you're supposed to be weeding out. 
So I'll finish weeding this and I will be right back. Okay, I've weeded both of my red piece and my yellow piece carefully. I'm not sure I got exactly what I needed weeded because the color change is just messing with my head. Anyway, I'm going to iron it on to this blue jean material, just an old leg of a blue jean material. I've got my iron. I'm just going to try to use my iron today to show you that, yes, indeed, you can just use your household iron. I have mine set on the highest setting it is with no steam. Let me move it over here. And I'm going to use in between an applique pressing sheet because I'm going to put one layer down and just tack it gently. And then I'm going to put the second layer on but I don't want the first layer to hit the iron because it will ruin it. So I'm going to use the applique pressing sheet. I'm thinking that maybe you could use parchment paper, but I don't have any down here, so I'm going to use this. Maybe I'll try that sometime for you. Anyway, the first thing you need to do is to just kind of preheat your item that you're gonna um, adhere your thing to. Okay, so I believe that the first bottom piece will be this one. Okay. I think that's pretty well preheated. Yikes, my wire is going to get burnt. Ah, hold on. Okay, there. All right, still preheated pretty well. So I'm going to put this down like this. Okay, and then I'm just going to iron it on just a little bit. Not a crazy amount. And you can see it's coming right off perfectly. Okay, so now I'm going to put the red right on top of that. But if I just did this, put this right on top, and if all of the yellow wasn't covered, I could have a real mess on my iron, and I see a little piece I missed right there. Hmm, I wonder if I can get it off before I get it really ironed on well. I feel like a dentist. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now I'm going to put this piece on, layer it up as best I can. And now today I probably don't really need to use that... Uh, transfer this um, paper right here because this transfer sheet covers up everything but if it didn't and any of this was exposed I would have to use it so I'm not going to use it today I'm just going to use my iron and on the back of my material it said of the iron on material it said how long to do it for and I've forgotten what it said so I'm going to just go with like 15 seconds so let's see, here we go. And I'm pressing down on my arm. And then I'm gonna lift it up and move it. Okay. I'm gonna wait for that to cool for a sec. Let's see. Okay, turned out really nice. I think it's adhered well. Oh, it's hot. Looks great. And something I might also do is come over here on the other side of the thing and just using that pressing sheet again under it and just kind of press like this. And then again, if I wanted to, again, I could just press it here just because I didn't read carefully how long I was supposed to do it for and I want to make sure it's on there well okay that's it thank you for joining me if you have any questions let me know and if you like my videos give me a thumbs up and please subscribe thanks y'all bye bye